It's recording. Okay. Hello all. I am Ellie. Whoa. Ellie the Night Ringer. And um, this is a video, more or less a tutorial video on how to make your own hula hoops. Um, in particular, this is for my sister Bethany down in Homer. And this is to show you how you can easily make your own hula hoops anytime you want with a simple 100 foot roll of a uh, 100 psi coil, um, or really what's called poly pro or poly pipe, what I call it for short. 100 psi is fine, 100 foot roll. And it comes from Lowe's. Lowe's. From Lowe's. Depot. They usually have all these, but Lowe's I would recommend because that's where I get all my materials from Lowe's. And basically, what we're going to do first is measure out or at least get a feel of based on a average hoop how much material you need. Now here's the hoop I made which is typically average, you know, the average hoop size that you would want. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some hoop material off of the coil about this size and then we're going to start to make our first hoop. So here we go. And we have a little bit of tape still left on it from the factory. It comes factory made. And basically what I want to do is measure out about the size I would want it to be. Let's see. So we're looking at probably somewhere in this neighborhood right here of material. Yeah, I think this is about good. So this is about average. So you kind of measure off based on another hoop that you're measuring against. And I can do it a little bit easier this way. You're basically just trying to like hug a circle. So you say, okay, about there. So about there. So as you can see, once you cut the material, from here to there, this will be about the size of it. So now what we want to do is we want to get our hoop cutter, which I think I left in the kitchen. So let me go and grab that. And we're going to take the stove down. I've got the stove on right now because the stove is heating up the uh, water that we're going to need. So spinach. Okay. So we're going to go about here. Now, here's a hoop cutter that I was talking about. And basically, um, they're about $8. This is a cobalt hoop cutter I got at Lowe's. And all you do is you put it right at the point that you want to make the cut in. And what you want to do is squeeze down on it around the hoop right where you want to cut. And sort of as you squeeze and it starts to grip into the material, twist it a little bit so that it doesn't kink too much. Keep squeezing, turn as you're squeezing, and it cuts quite easily. So we've now <laughs> cut our hoop and we're ready to connect it. So now we're gonna get ready for the next part, which is connecting the hoop. One. Okay, we're back. And um, we've already cut our tubing and we're ready to connect it. Just so you know, this is what's called a coupler. And these couplers, this is a 30 or um, a three quarter inch coupler for a three quarter inch pipe because it will insert here. Problem is, as you can see right now, it doesn't insert easily. So what you need is hot, like basically heat to expand the opening at the hole here and here so that the coupler will connect easily. So what we do is we boil some hot water in a pan or so, just like I have here. And all you have to do is just dip the tips of the pipe into the hot water. So you dip it in there like that. Right now it's on like a low setting because it's already been on, you know, on a higher setting before. But you can, you know, tilt it up if you want. Just hold it there for about a minute or so, or at least like maybe 30 seconds or so. All you have to do is just 
get the tip to just open up just a little bit. And if you've had the hot water running for a while, you only have to stick it in there for maybe about 15 seconds or so. Let's see how this works so far. See? So it pushes in. Eh, not easy, easy, but a little easier than it would have. So we've got one end in. Now, at this point, what we want to do, we want to put a little bit of weight in our hoop. So I'm going to let this stay on heating right now. We've got one end in, we've got one end open. This is the time to add weight to your hoop, water weight. What I recommend is, this is about a half of a cup of water, which is decent. Um, you can pour a little bit out if you want to be a little on the safer side. You want a little bit of weight, about a quarter to a half is good. This is about a half, so this is decent for right now. So all we're gonna do is pour the water into the open end of the hoop. So now it's in there. And basically, now we have a little bit of weight into the hoop. So now we wanna seal it. Now, before sealing it, we wanna decide, do we wanna put anything to make it have noise in it? because as it moves around, it's going to make noise based on what's inside of it. All that's inside of it right now is water. So we can now add something else inside to make it have a little noise, or we can just leave it as water. I say let's add a little bit of noise. So I will be right back, and I'm gonna get some noise Warm. makers. Hi, me again. Okay, I went and I got some stuff that you can um, bring the camera in a little bit closer on here. These are what I call noise makers. Shaky stuff, crystals, beads. Um, there's different things in here. Beads, crystals, balls, anything that could go inside the hoop to make it make noise. Even pennies might work. Anything, seashells, uh, I've got buttons here. Seashells, different things that make make noise. So, let's demonstrate, and let's just add a couple things. These things that will fit. A couple more things here. Okay, so you already heard that sound. So, we have a couple things that will help to make a little bit of noise. We're gonna add a few more just to like, enhance the effect here. Okay. So now you can hear a little bit of noise in there. So, whether it's beads, material, anything that you want, if it makes noise, that's good. So I think we got enough stuff now. We have, so we have different kinds of weights. Now what we're gonna do is take the open end and we're gonna go ahead and seal it now. We're gonna dip this into the water. And we just, basically what we want is for more of the tube to go into the water than that. So if your water starts to get low from boiling, just make sure it's in there enough. Okay, so that's been in there for a couple seconds now. We're gonna see how easy it is to connect. Boom, very easy. Okay, so now we're connected. So the next thing that we want is we're gonna to wanna to take a electric tape to seal this part, but not yet. But right now what we want is to take a lighter. Let's see if I have my lighter anywhere here. And no, my lighter seems to have disappeared. Okay, well, we're gonna take this other lighter that we can right here, and we're gonna just kind of flame this connecting point because what it does is it melts the material so that as it melts, and you keep it moving, 
can push the material together. Now it's not going to be a perfect seal here by doing that, but it helps. As the heat applies to the material and the coupler, you just keep pushing it together like that. Some people like to push the ends together and you can like tip it upside down and do the same thing on the bottom side. And you don't want to hold it too close, you want to hold it a little bit lower so that like the blue parts of the flame and the hot parts of the flame really get in there. You see smoke come off of it, that's good. This means it's melting the material, which is good. It's a good thing. And it starts to just sort of form a melting mold at that point. So what I do at this point is I go for my black tape. Let's see, we don't have any there. Okay, stop. Okay, we're back. I found my black electrical tape. And what we're going to do now is, if, as you can see, this is not perfect at all. But what's happened is, from applying the heat, it's melted the material onto the cup. You don't have to have this part here perfect as much as you want to have the material melted to the coupler. Because what's going on in between here, the material and the coupler is, it's been melted so that this section here is airtight. That means, even if we tip it upside down like now, no water is coming out of that guy, or very little. Now we're going to extra seal it with the electric tank. So all I do is I take the electric tank and I just put it around that area and just follow the tape around and make a nice tight seal. perfectly sealed point. Quit moving it. So now we are perfectly sealed up with our hood and we're ready to start taping it. And as you can hear, it's making noise. Okay, so now we're ready to tape. Okay, we've done all the complicated stuff before. Now we got our hoop ready. Now we're just ready to tape it up. Now, taping should be simple. A little tricky though. Here's one part. And I learned this off of my hooping partner, uh, Silver Red Angel. Now, come look. Now you can see. Most duct tape is going to come in this thick, like, I don't know if this is three quarter inch, what that length is, but it's, it comes thicker. What we want to do is thin the tape. So, all we do is we cut right down the middle of the tape to make a slit, like this. Right there. That's good. You basically want it in half. I mean, that wasn't a perfect half slit, but... Basically what you want is you want it cut in a half so that whichever half that you're taping with is thinner.
so that when you're using two or three or four rolls of tape that you get a thin stripe as you're wrapping the hoop. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Okay, so we've got our half forming here. Here's the most important thing. We're gonna start to tape. Choose an angle, I say about 45 degrees is good. So if you're gonna start to tape at the top of the hoop, you wanna like choose about a 45 degree angle. Now, here's the most important. As you're going with the hoop, as you're taping, and you can see already right what's starting to happen here with the tape, that it's going in those two slits that we formed. You always want, as you're going to wrap around the hoop, a straight line. And again, I learned this from Silver Red Angel. You always want a vertical drop. This is so important. Otherwise, you're going to be kinking. Your hoop's going to look like shit. If you learn this, you've got hooping, taping to a science. Now, keep it tight. Follow the tape around. Pull it around and down. Now, again, here you go. Vertical. You're going to be turning the hoop like a wheel as you're wrapping tape around it. So we're going to do this just a few times, and then you're going to see the gist of it. Follow with your thumb, vertical, straight. Now as you can see what's starting to happen, you're forming even marks on the hoop. So we do the same thing again. Tight, keep pulling out. Follow with your finger around the top, keep pulling tight. Push down with your thumb, vertical again. See? Even. We do the same thing again. Pull it tight, follow with your finger, come around, follow with your thumb. You're turning it slowly, tight. So as you're getting the gist of this, now I'm going to speed it up just a little bit for you, just to show you how it goes in real time. And then you'll see how it looks in just another minute. <laughs> The turning is going to happen without you even really recognizing that it's happening, but you're doing it without you consciously realizing it after a while. You're just going through the motions. This is the way the rest of this part of the taping is going to go. 
If you get this part down, you're going to be an expert in no time. Vertical, vertical, vertical. Every time you are going to wrap tape around the hoop, you want to be vertical. Okay? You can cut.